All right, if we're in a clinch situation when we're trying to control a person, there's a few different ways that you can control them based off of what their behavior is. Now, in order to successfully be able to maintain control of this person's body, you have to also be aware of what this person is essentially trying to do. If at any point you lose focus on what the person's body movements are, there's a very good chance that they're gonna overtake that position and just pretty much completely dominate you for the rest of the fight going from there. So let's jump right into it. If you end up in this clinch position, I've got them into a tight shoulder lock. This is a very common position to essentially just restrain somebody and control them. It's hard for them to punch me from here. They can't really swing up at my face. Pretty much it just, it's a good position to isolate their body movements as a whole. If I just kind of casually sit here, I'm just holding them, even if I'm squeezing with a lot of pressure, this person still has the ability to bend this arm a little bit and kind of grab my back if they need to. And it's very easy for them to either stand up if they're bigger than you, or he can very well just turn into me and start tackling me, trying to take me to the ground. Or if he's really aggressive, he can kind of turn up and start trying to just punch me in the stomach, punch me in the face, and eventually work his way into me. Now again, even if I'm stronger, if I'm bigger, if I don't have a good control position on the shoulder, that's a very good situation of what's going to happen. I'm trying to just calm this person down. I'm holding him. If at any point I see that he's trying to turn into me or get aggressive with me, all I need to do is one, make sure that my chest stays above his shoulder. If at any point his shoulder starts getting higher and higher, I'm slowly going to start losing this position. Now I can get it back, but it's going to be difficult. So I'd rather, if I've maintained this position, I'm already in it. I'd rather just stay in this position. So if I feel like he's starting to come into me, your first option is simply just going to kind of scoop back or off at an angle and just kind of quickly adjust your weight and drop down a little bit to drive this person's energy down. I don't necessarily have to take them all the way to the ground, but the tiny little jerk motions again is going to bring his energy in. So all I'm really doing if we're going slow at first is I would essentially just kind of step back and tuck or step off to the side and tuck. If he's coming at me full speed, he's trying to take me, quick little jerk motion. And I jerk the motion down again. Now, I don't have to take him to the ground. I can literally just maintain the control position from here. He's not really in a good spot to try and do anything. However, if again, if he tries to muscle his way and try and stand up and fight it, then I take him all the way down to the ground and we deal with it from there. Even if I'm doing this right, it could very well be a struggle where he's really trying to get at me and this jerky motion just isn't gonna work. So option number two, from this position, I'm gonna switch to a one hand grip. My hand that's coming behind the shoulder is gonna tuck on the tricep. I'm gonna keep this grip nice and tight I'm still pressuring down on the shoulder a little bit, but even from this position, as you can tell, if he wants to stand up, I can't physically hold this person down. So if we're in this position, obviously this one hand isn't gonna be able to control this person by itself. So I take my second hand and I'm simply posting on this head because if you understand the body mechanics, when we're back in this position, he's leading with his head with everything. He's not just gonna kind of barrel roll into me. He has to turn his head, which allows his whole body to turn into me. So if I keep one hand here, I post on the other hand with his head, if he starts trying to turn into me, this is a pretty easy position for me to hold on. Now again, I'm not standing up straight. I'm also not super low. I'm kind of getting that wrestler stance, nice tight grip here, and I'm stiff arming the head. So if he's going full force trying to turn into me, it's very easy for me to hold and maintain this position. Now, for the long term though, I can't sit in this position all day. Eventually one of us is gonna break and I'd rather it be him than me because if at any point my hand slips or he pressures past my hand buckles, and he just continues to plow right into me, I'm in trouble. I have to be able to maintain this position, but I also have to understand when my time is, okay, I can't hold on anymore. What do I want to do from there? Our first takedown obviously was this position where we kind of jerk him down. Now, if I'm here and he's pushing into me and I feel like I can't hold on to it anymore, there's nothing stopping me from releasing this hand, coming back up onto the shoulder and going right back to our original position. Second option from this position, as he's pressuring into me again, he's pressuring, his head's coming in, I'm going to kind of, it's a give and take idea. I'm pushing, knowing that he's gonna push back with his head. As that head is pushing back, my forward pressure is going to switch to behind his head and I'm actually going to feed his pressure all the way through, straight down to the ground, and can come down into a knee on belly, I can come down to a catcher position. Obviously from here, I can continue with wrist locks, we can go into some sort of arm bar restraint, but again, I can control the person from the ground. He's pushing, he's pushing. I bring it down, I drop my belly, knee on his belly, and we get into this position from here. Your third option from this way. Again, some of these are gonna kind of start getting a little bit more advanced, but play around with it. He's pressuring into me. He's still trying to come in and try and get a takedown at some point. It's getting harder for me to hold on to him. Again, I'm going to release that pressure and let his energy go through. But again, you have to time this right. I can't just, when, if there's no pressure, I can't just let go. I have to wait till I feel him pushing into me. Now this one is gonna depend on your ability to control somebody from the back clinch. As I release his head 
and his energy comes through. I'm again pushing his head through, only this time I'm not going to hold on here. I'm going to completely let go all together, let his body come through, and grab onto the back. Either I'm going to land in a seatbelt, land in a bear hug, over, under the arms, one over, one under, doesn't matter. I have to be quick in this because it's going to turn into somewhat of a scramble. He starts really pressuring into me, and I just trap onto his back. If I get to this position, I can't stay here. Obviously, from this position, I have to take the person down. Plenty of options you have to take down from there. We'll cover that in a later video, but just understand from that point, I'm simply just trying to get back control from here, and then we'll work on it from that position. Your fourth and final takedown that you can do from here again, a little bit more advanced, requires a little bit of wrestling background. So, same idea. I'm pressuring in, he's pushing into me. Now, this time, I'm actually going to essentially do like a shoulder shrug and turn my head like you would if it was a collar tie. Same motion, as this comes around, I'm going to drop my weight and drop my level and come in for a single leg. If I can trap this arm in the process, as I'm coming down, if I can trap this arm as I come in for that single leg, great. If not, don't worry about it, we're still shooting for the single leg. So, going all the way through it, drop, I come in. Now, a couple options. I can come in for the single leg, and take the leg up and take the person down from here, whether I drop and pressure my weight. If we get into this position here, I can literally just scoop the leg and start working my pressure and take the person down this way. Either which way is up to you, but let's see it live. So if we're in this position again, he's pressuring into me, he's pushing, he's pushing, I drop, I come in, and I take that pressure down to a single leg. Obviously with any of those positions, you have to be able to react quickly following up. You're still in a scramble, so not only do you have to take the person down, you have to be able to maintain the control afterwards. If at any point during any of these positions you lose that control at any point, whether it's up here, it's up here, and I physically can't take the person down, just create that space, create that distance, completely break that contact altogether. So either way, the options are yours. Play around with them, see which one works best for you. Let us know in the comments. We'll see you next time.